going on. But if we point it up at the ceiling, we can. Okay? Now, what's the point of a flat chart? Oh, why, why do you have a flat chart? So you can see in the dark. So you can see in the dark. You're right. Now, if I want to go out with a flashlight, what if I put it in this basket? Like that. Am I going to be able to see much? No. Well, Jesus said, if you're going to carry a flashlight, don't put it under a basket. Oh. So what do you think that means? Okay. You, if you turned all the lights out, which I thought about doing, but I think they wouldn't like it. You're right, you would need the flashlight even more. In fact, there was somebody who once tripped on that step and broke a hip. Yeah. The moral of the story is don't carry communion in the dark. <laughs> okay, I want you to think about that because that's what Jesus talks about today. He says, don't put your light under a basket, which means don't hide the need for yourself. And that's all I got to say. And you guys can go to Sunday school. Yay. Where'd the cross go?
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins. And give us that liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Shout out and don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fastings as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day of humble, to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this fast that I choose, to loose the bounds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke? to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, you shall be recalled, shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading responsibly the selected song for this morning, Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty to the Lamb. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light right shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. 
They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire of all their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see the hand They will gnash their teeth in the way. The desire of the wicked will perish. A reading from the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words of wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamations were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of the ages of the, or the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The Word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can then its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under feet. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, until not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. One spring, some years back, I got an offer from a friend. She had one of those timeshares. And she said, let's go together and You'd show me Italy. Great, I said. I'd come home from Italy about three years before. And we looked at Italy back when you still looked at things in like catalogs. And the only place available in Italy was way up in Cortina in the mountains, which is snow country, and we were going in May. About four hours from everywhere. So I said, well, what else is in there? And she said, well, there's, here's the catalog. I said, look, we could go to Israel. And we found that there was, in Tiberias, which is on the Sea of Galilee, a timeshare right at the time we were able to go. And so we went. I can still hear the first morning we were there, the sound of little children about to jump into the pool that was below our room. And they were calling, Abi, Abba, catch me, Father. The original version of the Lord's Prayer is our Father, Abba. We went all around the Sea of Galilee, and one of the places we visited was the ruins of Peter and Andrew's town, Capernaum. And we also went to the traditional site of the Sermon on the Mount, of which you just heard a part. I was really struck and surprised with how steep and hilly the land was north of the lake. It went up suddenly and in great rounded hills that were half mountains, kind of like you ever been to or seen Northern California. Now, about 30 miles away from the end of the lake is a town in the middle of what is largely rural area. It's called Hatsar Milgalit. And you can, in fact, see it all the way from the edge of the lake. It's a modern town, 
build near the ancient town of Hatzor. And at night, you can see its lights, a crown of light on top of those dark hills. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Now, it's more likely that those listening to Jesus when he first told this story were thinking of Jerusalem, which is also built on a hill. But the point is, in any case, it's there and everybody can see it. And he says that those who follow him and listen to him should be like that. Are we? Or are we reasonably content to be hidden? Again, Jesus says, we are to be salt and light to the world. Now, borrowing from him, we will say of somebody who's really very noticeably honest, well, he's the salt of the earth. Salt, of course, brings out flavor. But we're not used to what happened back then, which was salt came with other minerals, and if you wash that collection, the sodium chloride, the pure salt, would actually just flow out with the water and you would be left with crunchy, unusable minerals. What's left wasn't salt. And, as he said, it should be chucked. We are to be salt. Now, a commentator I read said, we would hear this very differently if Jesus had said, you are the hot red peppers of the world. The idea, you see, is not so much to be ethically holy, although that surely should be the case. Our righteousness is to be of high caliber. But he implies that we are to be the zest of our communities. The Zip, a distinctive and unusual flavor. See how these Christians care about one another. And sometimes that's now said in ironic oppositional snark, but even so. The thought of us being the zest of the world. Even bland goodness, like in, say, a soup, is frankly uninteresting. We need to put salt in it. And salt also, at that time, no refrigeration, um, was a principal way to preserve food, especially meat and fish. So salt not only savors, it saves from rot. Again, I have colleagues, um, a very good friend of mine, uh, who is Nigerian, and one of the absolute favorite things for my brothers and sisters uh, from certain parts of Nigeria is salt fish, which you have to then unsalt, but it makes all kinds of good Nigerian dishes. And the first time I went to his church and they had an auction, they had these huge cod that had been frozen and salted, and they were good for shelf life for several years. Never seen a cod, full, salted. But then I tasted what happened when you cooked with them, and they were yummy. Are we then the salt of the earth, that which saves and savors and gives zest? And yes, you cannot hear Jesus about being light bulbs and salt cellars and hill towns without, as he did, reading the prophets, especially Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet that Jesus repeatedly quotes throughout all the Gospels. And today, well read, Richard, today you hear Isaiah ripping into the religious businessmen of his time. He sees them at worship but he also sees their weekday practices and sees how they behave towards their employees and sees how they behave in the community and calls it all oppressive and unjust. 
He sees that the haves of his time are not sharing with the have-nots. And yeah, there's a lot of political implications for the first century Jews and Christians who heard him and for 21st century people of faith who will still listen. Note, Isaiah says that if we act ethically at our workplace, if we treat our co-workers and employees, if we have them well, if we feed the hungry, house the homeless, make sure the naked have some clothes, then did you catch this? Your light will break forth like the dawn. Your light and your healing will quickly appear. A community that puts high value both on honesty and fairness and on compassion and concern for those in need is it like a society that is built on a hill? Everybody sees it. He challenges us to be salt, light, and hill town. And it's fresh still as a challenge. And it will affect, by the way, the politics of Irving, of Texas, of the United States, and of the global community. Now, we cannot be salt and light unless we live in God's grace. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says that he is the light of the world. We can only be the light of the world by being the body of Christ in the world. So it is Christ's light that shines out in us. Is it easy being scrupulously honest and fair in our dealing with others? No, or more people would do it. Unfortunately, my observation is the more power or money or status somebody has, the easier and more tempting it is to cut corners ethically. First, you say, well, we gotta get the job done, but soon you slide into things like, because I am the boss, or there's a quick way to salvage that bottom line, or, they even wrote a book about this, I am the smart one in the room. Or simply, and you're sliding lower, I have the power and they will have to do it. I'd like to see them squirm. The Lord Jesus knows all the ways that we can wiggle out of the light. But we need his light to truly see the things in the world. Think about Living without light, when the lights are out, you run into things. You can't see the world as it is. We need his light to be lights, to see the world as it really is, in need of light and zest and help, and to be comfortable taking that role of light and salt and zest to change our communities and ourselves. Amen. I invite you to stand and profess your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again.
again the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. When the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the regions of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those in Ukraine, Russia, Somalia, the women and children of Afghanistan, and those here in our own country. For those who are the <clears throat> For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George, Michael, and Fraser, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those in this parish who need. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forever. And we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Or second or third time, we're very glad you came. And 
hope that you will, with everybody else, go into the parish hall after the service, see something you would like to pick up and take home for breakfast tomorrow, and take it, because we had a great abundance of food and we want to carry it off in a dozen ways. Thank you. Um, the annual meeting of the parish was held with breakfast between the services. We have elected uh, three persons to serve on vestry, Roger Fogel, Charlie Rocket there in the back, and Angie Litchfield also there in the back. Roger uh, ushers for the eight o'clock service. Um, our new senior warden is Sharon Blackman, and our new junior warden is Roger Fogel. So that is uh, your leadership for 2023. Next Sunday, we kind of a lead in from the sermon. We will be doing Arts Time on the Rotation for Family Promise, which is the ministry to homeless here in Irving. If you'd like to sign up, there's a sign up sheet at the back of the church and in the Edinburgh Hall, um, where we're our coffee and, and uh, refreshments are. Uh, next week also, or this week I should say, uh, on Thursday, you can do what Episcopalians are not allowed to do in church, which is go and uh, participate in Irving Care's family, or rather, uh, fundraising bingo. Okay, we're not allowed to do bingo in the Episcopal Church, just no games of chance. But uh, you can go do it and uh, for a good cause over at Irving Cares Thursday evening. The details are in your bulletin. Um, if you haven't, if you don't use one or haven't tried it, you might want to pick up a small or large copy of Forward Day by Day. The readings uh, for scripture for every day of the year are right in it, divided by day, and usually a short meditation. Many people find this a way to focus on a daily basis their relationship with God. Are there any birthdays? Seeing none, are there announcements that I have omitted? It always seems to be one I drop. No? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in the soul ministry that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you all. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.